over 2,14,000 trees are going to be cut for the construction of Uj Hydropower Multipurpose Project in Jammu and Kashmir. India's Environment Ministry has recommended clearance for the Uj Multipurpose Hydroelectric Project. Multipurpose project means the water will be used for hydropower, irrigation and drinking. First, let me show you where this dam is going to be built. It is going to be built on River Uj, which is a tributary of River Ravi. Let me first show you where River Ravi originates. This river originates from the Himalayan mountains in Bara Bangal region in Chamba district of Himachal Pradesh. It flows in the northwest direction and passes through the district of Chamba. Then it flows in the western direction. After flowing for about 20 kilometers, the river turns southwest and enters into the northern part of Punjab in the Pathankot district. Now here this river becomes the source of the Ranjit Sagar Dam Lake. The river continues to flow southwest and reaches the India-Pakistan border. Then the river continues to flow along the India-Pakistan border for approximately about 100 kilometers. The river then enters the city of Lahore. From Lahore, the river flows southwest for about 280 to 300 kilometers and joins the river Chenab. And then further, as we know, river Chenab joins the river Indus at the city of Mithankot in Pakistan. And the Indus River continues to flow and drains into the Arabian Sea. The Uj River is a tributary of the River Ravi that flows through the Katua district in the Indian Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The Uj River originates from Badedwa Hills, which are part of the Pir Panjal range. The river flows for about 100 kilometers. Some of it is in Pakistani Punjab before joining River Ravi near Chakram Sahai in Indian Punjab. The water of Uj River is used for drinking, irrigation and to feed a number of small canals and streams of Kathua district. Now if at all a dam has to be constructed, obviously it needs to be built at a higher elevation because it will have more gravitational potential energy. So the dam will be built somewhere in this region, closer to the Uj River's place of origin. Now as we know River Uj is a tributary of Ravi, which is further part of the Indus River system. The Indus River system comprises of the river Indus, Chhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Bias and Satlaj. All these rivers are shared by both India and Pakistan, with a small share for China and Afghanistan. In 1960, India and Pakistan had signed the Indus Water Treaty along with a third party representative of the World Bank after eight years of negotiation. Distribution of waters of the Indus and its tributaries between India and Pakistan is governed by the Indus Water Treaty. With the partition of India in 1947, even the water of Indus River system was divided. And the sharing formula is something like this. The three western rivers, Indus, Chhelum and Chenab, went to Pakistan. And the three eastern rivers, Satlaj, Ravi and Bias, were given to India. India is allowed to use 20% water of the western rivers for irrigation, power generation and transport purposes. Of course, Pakistan is not comfortable with the fact that, as per this treaty, India got away with the total flow of 33 million acre feet on the eastern rivers, while it also had to share the waters of western rivers. So whenever there is any conflict between both the countries, for example the terror attack in the Indian parliament in 2001, then Mumbai in 2008, and then the incidents in Uri in 2016 and Pulwama in 2019. India's response to Pakistan has always been to stop its share of water from the eastern rivers. In fact, there is also an uproar in India for abolishing the Indus Water Treaty completely as a response to Pakistan's cross-border terrorism. So over the past few years, as the political relationship between India and Pakistan has declined, India's plan has been to increase the utilization of the water of the eastern rivers on which India has full rights under Indus Water Treaty. Now with respect to this particular dam and also other dams that are currently present as well as are going to be built over the next few years in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, I'm going to lay out all the realistic facts related to economic opportunities, environmental concerns and cross-border politics and diplomacy. See, building a dam is an expensive activity, plus it takes a lot of time. 
However, the natural landscape of Jammu and Kashmir is such that due to natural higher elevation, it is easy to tap into more gravitational potential energy for meeting domestic energy demands. Naturally, with the construction of such a huge project, there will be job opportunities for local residents. And it will also have a compounding effect on various types of indirect business opportunities like shops, food stall, tea stalls, besides a variety of suppliers, traders, transporters will come here and benefit the local immensely. Then the water from the dam can be utilized in such a way that it increases the agricultural production of that region. Then dams also become the center of recreational activities and tourism. With the help of small canals, water can be transferred from areas of excess to areas of deficit water. Then it also provides reliable source for drinking water and navigation. So these are some of the potential benefits of building a dam. And then not to forget, India also gets an upper hand in dealing with Pakistan's leadership, which often perpetuate lies. Now coming to the other side, we also cannot ignore the fact that building a dam causes huge damage to the environment during the construction phase, which includes habitat loss for humans, plants and animals, or any form of organic life, then water loss through evaporation and seepage, then soil erosion and declining water quality is also an issue. From this project, as we know, the central government has given the clearance to cut 2,14,000 trees. The total land required for the project is about 4,350 hectares, over twice the size of Delhi airport. Of the total land required, the submergence area is 3,450 hectares, which comprises of 329 hectares of government land and 680 hectares of forest land and 2,441 hectares of private land. Cutting so many trees also affects the microclimate of the area. When we say microclimate, it means the moisture, temperature and winds of the atmosphere of a particular area. Just think about it, when so much of water is being stopped by dam, it will form a reservoir. There will be evaporation in this water reservoir. Evaporation means the process of turning liquid into vapor. When there is more water vapor in the atmosphere, it affects the humidity. Then in turn, it has effect on the microclimate of the surrounding area's ecosystem, flora and fauna. Here are some of the birds that are found in this region. And then here are some of the mammals that are found in this region. So anyhow, these are two sides of the same coin. I hope you got a broad overview regarding dams and especially about this particular dam. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.